The Perseid Meteor Shower makes an annual appearance and is one of the best meteor showers of the entire year. From mid-July to the end of August, this meteor shower is visible if you know where to look, and in mid-August it peaks, often with over a hundred meteors visible every hour overnight. Let's talk about the best way to see these shooting stars, and what actually causes the same meteor shower to happen every single year. Grab a blanket or reclinable chair, a warm drink or something else to help you relax with, and head outside to see the Perseid meteor shower this summer. The further north you are, the better the shower is. As such, it is best north of the equator, but is still visible in some more northerly parts of the southern hemisphere too. Every Perseid meteoroid, that's what we call them while they're still in space, looks like it's coming from the Perseus constellation, and that's where the shower gets its name. Perseus, Perseids, you, you can see what's happening there. Find that constellation and you can do my favourite trick for seeing more shooting stars. Now, the Perseus constellation is not the most famous constellation, nor is it one of the easiest to find, but I'll show you how to do it. Luckily, it's right next to the much brighter and much more recognisable Cassiopeia constellation, and Perseus follows it across the sky over the course of a night, so we can just look for that one instead. Cassiopeia is a five-star W-shaped constellation that's much easier to spot. It's fairly easy to see if you know what you're looking for, which is this W shape of stars. But you can also download free apps that just tell you what you're pointing your phone at, and that can make it even easier. Cassiopeia is visible all year round, so you can practice spotting it anytime, but the meteors are only visible during July and August. Perseus is just a bit south of the W, but to be honest, you can just treat it as if the meteors are coming from Cassiopeia. I've come outside to show you exactly what we're looking for in the sky, and as you can see, even with street lights around me, Cassiopeia is pretty easy to spot over there. The best, most comfortable way to see plenty of shooting stars, in my opinion, is to lie on the floor or recline in a chair with the top of your head pointing at Cassiopeia, or the Perseus cluster if you can find it, but as I say, they should be in the same direction. If you lie like this, the meteors will all come from above your head, and all you need to do is keep looking straight up, and the meteors will pass right over you. Around the peak of the shower in mid-August, you should see plenty of shooting stars if you lie like this for a while. When you first go out, give your eyes a few minutes to adjust to the darkness. The longer you stare up at the sky, the more regular stars you should see, which is a good indicator that your eyes are adjusting, and you're seeing more and more faint objects as your eyes collect more and more light from them. Try not to look at your phone too much during this time, as it will ruin your eyes adjusting to the darkness, and try not to use any bright torches either. If you need one, you can actually buy red torches, which don't ruin your night vision nearly as much, so you could always get one of those if you need it. But mostly, you probably don't need one, and you should be okay just lying in the dark. It's best if you can go somewhere particularly dark and away from bright lights such as houses or streetlights. The darker, the better, and it will be much easier to see more shooting stars if you do so. But to be honest, most of the time a garden will work absolutely fine, just so long as you aren't right next to any really bright lights. The exact dates of the peak of the shower change every year, but I'll leave a comment down below for this year's dates. It's usually around the 12th to the 15th of August, and there are plenty of shooting stars visible, even if we aren't exactly at the peak. So have fun, and let me know how many you're able to spot. So, now we know how to spot the Perseids fairly easily. What actually causes this annual meteor shower? Well, despite the fact they look like they're coming from the Perseus constellation, and they're named after it, the two are completely unrelated in terms of origin. This is just a coincidence on the sky. The Perseids are actually caused by a comet. More specifically, they're caused by the tail of a 16 mile wide comet called Comet Swift-Tuttle that last passed close to the Earth in 1992. Similar to the Earth, this comet orbits the Sun, but it does so on a very elongated path that's almost perpendicular to the plane of the rest of the solar system. That means it sort of goes up and over the sun, while all the planets go round and round. Comet Swift-Tuttle only passes close to the Earth once every 133 years, but it still causes the Perseid shower annually. This comet, like most others, 
leaves behind a lot of muck as it travels through space. It's made of rock, ice, and dust, and it leaves a trail of this behind wherever it goes. Because of its steep orbit around the sun, there's sort of a band of this material that the Earth passes through once a year as it orbits the sun. As we pass through this muck, lots of the small bits of ice and dust collide with the Earth's atmosphere and fall towards the ground. As they do, they burn up as they fall through the atmosphere. And that is what creates the bright shooting stars we see as the Perseus meteor shower. Almost none of them actually reach the ground. They're small enough to completely burn up as they pass through the atmosphere. But if any do reach the ground, that's when we call them meteorites, only once they actually land. But as I said, most don't make it that far. Typically, a Perseid meteoroid in space is moving at about 37 miles per second. Once they enter the Earth's atmosphere, they officially become known as meteors, or more commonly, shooting stars. And as they burn up, they reach scorching temperatures of more than 1600 degrees Celsius, or over 3000 degrees Fahrenheit. They're normally visible when they're about 60 or just under 100 kilometers above the ground. So when you see one, try to remember that you're looking at a distant grain of dust that is thousands of degrees and traveling faster than most of us will ever move. And that is pretty amazing. Thanks for watching and happy meteor hunting. Leave me any questions you have down below and do let me know how you got on looking for shooting stars. And please consider subscribing if you found this helpful and interesting. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye.